Hello students, I would like to create this video to demonstrate few problems involving integration. All right, if you remember, we have spent about two weeks to understand this interesting process called integration. This is basically the reverse process of differentiation, right? We defined it in a systematic way. There are two types of integration that we have seen in this course, namely, indefinite integral and definite integral. Indefinite integral produces final answer in terms of an infinite family of antiderivatives. And definite integral produces final answer in terms of a number. Because of this reason, definite integral can be connected with many practical applications. This is something that we have seen, right? There are three integration techniques that we have seen namely direct matching algebraic simplification and u substitution right uh, we have few interesting set of formula that arises from the fact that integration and differentiation are opposite processes of each other this these five formulas we call them basic integration formulas they let us integrate the basic function. For example, they tell us how to integrate constant, power of x, and exponential function, right? Integration of a constant is a constant times variable plus a generalized constant of integration. Integration of x to the power n is x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 plus c. Uh, n, of course, needs to be different than negative 1. Integral of negative one power of x is natural log absolute x plus c. Integral of e to the x is e to the x plus c. And integral of e to the ax is e to the ax over a plus c where a is constant, right? So what you see on the board is the summary of what I have just said. As I said, my goal is to show you a couple of examples of each of this integration technique in form of both types of integration all right so let's try to discuss these examples one by one on the board <coughs> let's say i would like to integrate this function suppose we would like to integrate let's say uh, five x to the 4 minus um, 9x cubed plus 4x squared plus 2x minus 3. This is the function that I created by adding five different terms. All right. My goal is very clear that I wanted to match every single term with this basic integration formulas. If there is a matching, then I am going to use the formula to integrate it. All right. So it is really simple idea. If constant is multiplied by expression involving x, we don't touch that constant. Meaning constant uh, can be kept outside integration symbol if it is multiplied by the expression involving variable x. All right. Let's apply this process. Looks like First four terms, they are various powers of x. We know how to integrate any power of x. The last term is a constant term by itself. We know how to integrate that one as well, right? Let's apply the integration process. What is the entire derivative of 5x to the 4? It's going to be 5 times x to the 4 plus 1 over 4 plus 1. Entire derivative of x to the 3 is x to the 4 over 4. Entire derivative of x to the 2 is x to the 2 plus 1 over 2 plus 1. Entire derivative of x to the 1 is x to the 2 over 2. Entire derivative of that constant is constant times variable x. We throw constant of integration to indicate that this is indeed a full family of entire derivatives, right? Okay, uh, there are few terms where you can cross out factors from top and the bottom. Let's cross them out and let's write down the final answer. All right, so for example, in the first term, 
I can cross out pi from top and the bottom. So I'm gonna get rid of it. <coughs> Second and third term, nothing cancels out. So I'm gonna leave them alone. Uh, in the third term, in the fourth term, I can cross out two from the top and the bottom. And fifth term is fine. And then the final uh, term consists of the constant of integration. So this is indeed the full family of antiderivatives, or it is indefinite integral of the given function. All right. Let's try to see one more example that involves, you know, uh, <coughs> function with the bounds, or in other words, definite integral. Let's say we would like to integrate um, 7 over x plus e to the 2x on the region 1 to 2. All right. So we would like to integrate this two term expression on the region 1 to 2. This is a definite integral. Remember, definite integration is a two-step process. Step one, compute one antiderivative of the given function. And then step two, use the fundamental theorem of calculus. Let's do that, all right? So I'm going to find out if each of these terms is matching with existing set of formulas or not. Looks like seven divided by x it is matching with negative one power of x. Uh, e to the two x, it's matching with e to the a x, where a is two. I can easily use these two formulas to get the entire derivatives of those two terms. Entire derivative of seven over x is seven nature log absolute x. All right. That is the entire derivative of seven over x. Remember seven is a constant that is multiplied by one over x. We don't touch that constant seven. Entire derivative of e to the two x is e to the two x over two. And then I need to evaluate this at the upper bound, at the lower down bound, and then I need to calculate the difference, right? Let's check, let's do that. Plug x equal to two. I get 7 log 2 plus e to the 2 times 2 over 2. I'm plugging x equal to 1 now. 7 times log 1 plus e to the 2 times 1 over 2. All right. I use the fundamental theorem of calculus. Remember, 1 and 2, both inputs are positive. No need to write absolute value symbol around those numbers two and one. They are already positive input and log is very well defined at those positive inputs. <clears throat> we know that log one is zero. So that term is gonna disappear. I get seven log two plus e to the four over two minus e to the two over two. All right, this is the answer in the exact form. As I said, you do not have to simplify this number any further, all right? Do not use your calculator to approximate this. Leave your answer in form of power of E or natural log of a number. Perfectly fine to do that. So this is the first technique. We call it direct matching. What we do here, we match every single term in our function with these five formulas. If there is a matching, we use the formulas to integrate it, right? <clears throat> now, let's try a couple of examples of the second technique, algebraic simplification. Once again, I'm going to do the same thing. I'll give you one example in terms of indefinite integral, one example in terms of definite integral. So let's do that, okay? So here is the next problem. Let's say we would like to integrate this product 2x plus 3 times 4x minus 7. <coughs> it should be clear that being a product, 
this is a single term expression and it's not matching with any of this formula what should we do we should try to use algebra to see if algebra can help us rewrite this product <coughs> in the expanded form where the expanded form has a matching with this formula if that's possible then that technique is called algebraic simplification let's try it. all right so in this case algebraic simplification would simply mean foil this out look i get 4 times 2x times 4x that's 8x square 2x times negative 7 that's negative 14x 3 times 4x that's positive 12x and then minus 3 times negative 7 that's negative 21 all right if you would like to take care of like terms before you apply integration process right i get a trinomial we know how to integrate it right so there are only three terms first two can be integrated using the power rule second last term can be integrated using the constant rule let's do that <coughs> entire derivative of x to the 2 is x to the 3 over 3 entire derivative of x to the 1 is x square over 2 entire derivative of 21 is 21 x pro constant of integration to indicate that this is indeed full family of entire derivatives right so this is a typical example of algebraic simplification let's try one more example of algebraic simplification let's say <coughs> we would like to integrate from 0 to 1 of e to the x plus 1 times e to the x plus 2 e to the 2x plus 2 let's try this one out all right again our goal is very clear being a product this is not matching with any of the basic integration formula so what i am going to do is i will try to foil this thing out all right let's do that <coughs> e to the x times e to the 2x plus 2 e to the x plus e to the 2x plus 2 dx remember what we do with the exponent when we have uh, two exponents sharing the same base multiply together we just add the powers right there are four terms in here e to the 3x 2e to the x e to the 2x and then 2 we need to <coughs> get the family of uh, 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 we need to get the entire derivative of each of this term all right entire derivative of e to the 3x is e to the 3x over 3 entire derivative of e to the x is e to the x entire derivative of e to the 2x e to the 2x over 2 and entire derivative of 2 is just 2x i need this to be evaluated at those endpoints evaluate entire derivative at 1 at 0 take the difference let's compute the difference all right so i'm going to replace x by 1 person what do we get e to the 3 times 1 so e cube over 3 2 times e e square over 2 2 times 1 is just 2 minus replacing x by 0 e to the 0 is 1 so this is 1 by 3 plus 2 plus 1 by 2 and then replacing x by 0 will make that last term 0 all right let's carefully open these two brackets these three terms i am not going to do anything with them these are like uh, various powers of e in their exact form right i have e cube over 3 plus 2e plus e square by 2 plus 2 minus 1 third minus 2 minus 1 by 2 we can cross out 2 from top and the uh, we can cross out 2 with those alternating sign negative 1 by 2 negative 1 by 3 we can simplify this further by finding the common denominator <coughs> looks like common denominator is 6 
and if you make it visible under both terms, you're gonna get negative five over six. This is the exact number that can be accepted as a final answer, right? There are two meanings of algebraic simplification. In case of product, foiling it out or expanding it would, if it, if it is helpful, then that is the first meaning of algebraic simplification. The second meaning of algebraic simplification is this. <clears throat> Let me give you one example where you have, you know, multiple terms in the top with single term sitting in the denominator. For example, let's say we have x cubed plus 2x squared plus 1 plus 3x e to the 3x divided by x. You see, I have four terms in the numerator, single term in the denominator. Certainly, we don't know how to deal with the function given in form of fraction. All right. So our goal is to, you know, split that denominator over every single term in the top and see if that works right <clears throat> so i split that denominator over the first term over the second term over the third term and then finally over the fourth term right crossing out the repeating powers from top and the bottom gives me x squared plus 2x plus x to the negative 1 plus 3 e to the 3x. Look, this is expression in form of four terms. Good news is every single term is matching with the set of basic integration formula. I can use the formula to integrate this function. Let's do that. Entire derivative of x squared is x to the 3 over 3. Entire derivative of x is x to the 2 over 2, and I kept 2 as is. Entire derivative of x to the negative 1 is natural log absolute x. Entire derivative of e to the 3x is e to the 3x over 3. Be sure you throw the constant of integration if it is indefinite integral. <coughs> we can simplify few terms here. For example, we can cross out two from the top and the bottom of the second term. We can also cross out three from the top and the bottom of the fourth term. And this is indeed the full family of entire derivatives for the given function. All right. Okay. Now it's time to see a couple of examples involving u substitution. Remember, uh, you need to know why u substitution uh, u substitution is designed for what type of function remember u substitution is designed to handle the product involving composite functions unfortunately not all product involving composite function can be integrated using u sub right what type of function what type of product can be integrated <coughs> using u substitution whenever the composite function is multiplied by the variable part of the derivative of the inner layer. This is when you can apply U substitution method on a particular product. Let me show you a couple of examples to demonstrate this idea. All right, so here is example number six. Let's say we would like to integrate um, <coughs> 7x e to the x squared plus 9. Okay. As I said, the idea is pretty simple. As a product, this is only one term. Is it matching with any of the formula? Answer is no. Right? Can I use algebra to make this term look like the formula? Answer is no. I can't really do anything. This is a product of polynomial and exponential function. There's not much we can do there, right? So that brings us to this 
next method called u substitution remember you must know when it is going to work one of your function substitution is designed to handle the composite function so in this product you must have one function with two layers can you find out that composite function well answer should be yes look at that this is the composite function right you need to focus on the inner layer of the composite function all right what did i say about uh, special product the product only those type of product can be handled using u substitution where composite function is multiplied by the derivative of the variable part of variable part of the derivative of the inner layer of your composite function right so inner layer is x square plus 9 what is the derivative of the inner layer 2x as i said i am only interested in the variable part of the derivative and that variable part is x right is this function is this composite function multiplied by x if yes then this is u substitution problem if no then this is not a u substitution problem obviously the answer is yes in our case so this is a u substitution problem let's try it out start with u being inner layer of the composite function i need to find the replacement of dx in terms of du so i'm going to take differential on both side very simple thing right so find the derivative of u with respect to u multiplied by du find the derivative of x square plus 9 with respect to x multiplied by dx and then solve this for dx meaning divide both sides by 2x this is how i read the first and third line if you want to replace x square plus 9 by u to make this thing look like e to the u then you must replace dx <coughs> by 1 over 2x times du in order to make integration work all right i am going to copy the same example now with this two changes inner layer should be replaced by u and dx should be replaced by that let's do that so symbol integration symbol then i have 7x then inner layer i choose to call it u and then dx is 1 over 2x du i want you to notice what happened with variable x it's gone right that leaves me with uh, this constant 7 over 2 which is multiplied by e to the u we can pull that 7 over 2 outside constant always can be brought outside the integration symbol right all you have to do now <coughs> is check what u substitution did u substitution converted that product in form of basic integration formula right integrate it now and then you know go back to variable x look entire derivative of e to the u is just e to the u i throw constant of integration now as i said your final answer must be in terms of variable x so i'm going to put value of u back which is uh, x square plus 9 and that gives me the integral of the given function with respect to x all right pretty simple thing there is no trick here as i said this is a logical process right you are replacing inner layer by brand new variable at the same time you are replacing dx by d of that brand new variable once you make those two changes the problem gets converted into variable u where u version has a perfect match with one of this formula right <clears throat> all right let's try one more the one with definite integral all right uh let's say we would like to integrate <clears throat> x plus 3 over x square plus 6x plus 7 on the region 0 to 1 all right okay so again understand the idea is pretty simple being a ratio this is not going to match with 
anything from this list right direct matching is not going to work can you use algebra answer is no if there is only single term in the bottom of the ratio i would use algebra unfortunately in the bottom i have free term expression algebraic simplification will not work right so that brings me to again u substitution method <coughs> now the question is is u substitution going to work well for u substitution first thing is that you must be able to express it must be able to see uh, the given function in form of factor multiplied by composite function right can we do that well let's try to rewrite this ratio in form of product this is how i am going to write it in form of product x plus 3 times x square plus 6x plus 7 to the negative 1 <coughs> all right now my composite function is clearly visible inner layer is x square plus 6x plus 7 outer layer is that negative one power right question is that is this composite function multiplied by the derivative of the inner layer or variable part of the derivative of the inner layer let's check it out what's the inner layer x squared plus 6x plus 7 derivative of the inner layer is 2x plus 6 the question is is this multiplied by 2x plus 6 doesn't look like it's multiplied by 2x plus 6 let's see one more thing carefully what if i factor 2 out all right as i say i want only variable part of the derivative to be multiplied with the composite function i can ignore 2 yes it is variable part of the derivative of the inner layer all right so this is u substitution problem let's use u sub start with uh, <coughs> u being inner layer of the composite function 1 times du is 2x plus 6 times dx i'm going to factor 2 out because my ultimate goal is to get rid of variable x when i do this replacement right Solve this for dx. In other words, divide both sides by, you know, 2 times x plus 3. This is how I read the first and third line. If you want to replace inner layer by u to make this thing look like u to the negative 1, in order to make integration work, you must replace dx by 1 over 2 times x plus 3 du. Okay? <clears throat> we have one more issue. What are these bounds correspond to? These bounds, they represent the value of x. Since we are changing our problem into variable u, we have to change those bounds into u as well. Let's make that happen, right? Uh, I'm gonna write two extra lines. <clears throat> when x is zero, corresponding u value will be 0 squared plus 6 times 0 plus 7 and this is really 7 right when x is 1 corresponding u value will be 1 square plus 6 times 1 plus 7 right and this all things adds up to 14 i believe right so i'm ready to <coughs> rewrite the entire problem into variable u let's do that all right four things i am going to four changes i am going to make i am going to replace inner layer by u dx by this expression that lower bound zero will be replaced by seven and upper bound one will be replaced by 14. let's do that okay this is what we get in our problem x equal to 0 correspond to u equal to 7 x equal to 1 correspond to u equal to 14 then i have x plus 3 then we have u to the negative 1 and then we have you know 
1 over 2 times x plus 3 du. As I say, get rate of x plus 3, right? This 1 over 2 is a constant. I'm going to pull it out, right? All I have to do is find antiderivative of u to the negative 1 and use the fundamental theorem of calculus with these two numbers. Remember, I got the entire derivative in terms of u. These are the bounds in terms of u. You can use these bounds right away. Let's do it. Plug u equal to 14. Natural log of 14 minus natural log of 7. And as I said, feel free to leave your answer in terms of natural log of a number or e to the power some number. Perfectly fine to leave your answer like that. All right. So these are two u substitution problem in form of both types of integration. Indefinite integral where the final answer is the family of infinite family of antiderivative. Definite integral where you have bounds where everything get converted into u including the bounds and then Fundamental theorem of calculus is applied on antiderivative involving variable u. All right. Now, let's end this discussion with uh, one or two quick examples of spatial substitution. Remember, this is also something that we have covered in uh, <coughs> in in uh, in that substitution section. So let me give you. Two examples of spatial substitution, one in terms of uh, indefinite integral and the other one is in terms of definite integral to end this story, right? So here is uh, uh, one example in form of indefinite integral. Let's say I would like to integrate um, x times x plus 1 to the power, let's say 100. All right. Uh, suppose I would like to integrate this product x times x plus 1 to the 100. Okay. Again, I take the same route. Is this matching with any of the formula? Being product, it's not matching with any of them. Right. So that brings me to the second step. Can I simplify this algebraically? Well, algebraic simplification is possible, but I need to multiply x plus 1 with itself 100 times. And then I have to distribute x over all the terms. A lot of work. Obviously, that's something that we are not going to do. Right? Algebraic simplification is not possible. Can you use u substitution? Well, again, we focus on our composite function. Uh, inner layer of the composite function is x plus 1. What's the derivative of x plus 1? It's going to be 1. Derivative of the inner layer is constant. If this function is multiplied by constant, then it's a u substitution problem. The question is, is this constant? Answer is no. This is not a constant. So this is not a regular substitution example. This is a spatial substitution example. Let's try to use uh, the substitution method in here. So I'm still going to start with uh, u being inner layer of the composite function. I'm going to find the replacement of dx in terms of du, right? Looks like I immediately get replacement of dx in terms of du. Derivative of u with respect to u times du. Derivative of uh, x plus 1 with respect to x times dx. I need to make these two changes in my problem. Replacing inner layer by u and replacing dx by du. Gives me x u to the 100 du. What is the issue here? The issue is variable x did not disappear. In our regular substitution problem, variable x would disappear, right? 
in spatial substitution variable x still remains there what should we do well remember x is not a constant so you can't take it out so what i do is i go back to my substitution variable i solve it for x in terms of u and i plug its value right there all right i really get u minus 1 times u to the 100 all right now think about it what spatial substitution did regular substitution allow us to convert the product involving composite function in form of the basic integration formulas spatial substitution allowed me to convert this product involving composite function in particular form where algebraic simplification is going to work look algebraic simplification is possible i don't have to calculate multiply x plus one with itself 100 times i can just distribute that u to the 100 over both terms these problems are often called translation problems all right but method is a spatial substitution method all right antiderivative of u to the 101 is u to the 102 over 102 antiderivative of u to the 100 is u to the 101 over 101 plus c uh, throw value of u back and you are done right u is x plus 1 i get x plus 1 to the 102 over 102 minus x plus 1 to the 101 over 101 plus c all right so as you see spatial substitution is similar to the regular substitution the only way it is different is that you know variable x did not disappear you are going to once you write x in terms of u you are going to get something that has a matching uh, that, that that can be handled using algebraic simplification right let's end this discussion with one final example of spatial substitution involving the bounds let's try this one out suppose we would like to integrate from 0 to 1 x over x plus 2 all right once again being a ratio it's not going to match with anything there are two terms in the denominator right meaning this is not even uh, algebraic simplification problem so what i would do next is i would try to see this in form of product involving composite function looks like we are able to see that if we simply send the denominator in the top i realize that uh, there is a composite function derivative of the inner layer is constant instead of constant i have variable x multiplied with this composite function meaning this is not a regular substitution it's a spatial sub problem start with u being inner layer of the composite function du is same as dx change those bounds into u right so when x is 0 u is 2 when x is 1 the responding u value will be 3 okay all right make all these four changes right bounds uh, inner layer of the composite function and dx i get u running from 2 to 3 x u to the negative 1 du again we are running into the same issue right variable x did not disappear the way we handle it is following i solve this relationship between x and u in terms of x right and i plug value of x right here look 2 to 3 u minus 2 times u to the negative 1 all right algebraic simplification will work now let's distribute u to the negative 1 over both terms integral from 2 to 3 
u times u to the negative one minus two u to the negative one du. All right. Uh, two exponents sharing the same base, right? They are multiplied together. You are going to add the powers, right? U to the one minus one is u to the zero, and u to the zero is just one. Anything to the zero is just one, right? Let's find the entire derivative of both terms with respect to u. Entire derivative of one with respect to u is u. Entire derivative of u to the negative one is natural log absolute u. And I must evaluate it from uh, two to three. Use fundamental theorem of calculus, and we are done. Look, replacing u by three, so three minus two log three. And then replacing x by u by two, two minus two log two. Open the brackets and simplify numbers. All right, three minus two is just one, so one minus two log three plus two log two. All right, and as I say, we can leave our final answer in this particular format. All right. Okay, so this is perhaps the end of the story. I really uh, did more than enough examples uh, of both types of integration with all three techniques that you guys have seen. If you have any question about any of this topic, feel free to send me an email and I'll be more than happy to meet with you over Teams and uh, we can discuss. You know, we can go over uh, the topics that you feel difficulty with. Um, wish you all the best for your exam. I know many of you already participated in course evaluation. Those who haven't, I strongly, strongly encourage you guys to leave your comments uh, on course evaluation. This is very important for us, for university and for you guys too. All right. Okay, thank you so much for uh, this entire class. Uh, have a wonderful experience teaching this course. I hope you guys have the same. Um, and again, if there are any issues, any questions, do send me an email and I'll be more than happy to, you know, help you out. Thank you so 